Oh, hey, what's up, guys? Kryptonic here, and today I'm going to be looking at the best Streamlab settings and kind of explaining everything to you guys so that way you guys know what you're doing when you're operating on the software. So that way it just makes your life a lot easier when it comes to streaming or recording. So if you guys do end up enjoying the video, make sure to drop a like on it. But, anyways, guys, let's get straight into the video. Alrighty, so now that we are over on my desktop, I'm going to be running down through a few settings just so that you guys know exactly what you're doing it when you're doing it. So first off, starting off stream, you can just connect your account. It's that easy. You can just connect it through Twitch, Facebook, multi-stream, whatever you want to do. It's really, really easy. And then this is the main thing that we're going to be looking at at the output. So when it comes to output, it literally comes down to two things either you're going with x264 which is your processor so amd or intel whatever you have that's x264 a lot of the times x264 does look a lot better but it also is a lot more demanding from your processor so that means that unless you have a good processor like an i7 or an amd ryzen 5 you're not going to be getting much use from this so what a lot of people are actually going to want to focus on is hardware encoding which is your gpu and GPU means your graphics card so if you have a 1060 a 1660 an RX 580 everything like that that's all GPU so today I'm going to be focusing on hardware encoder through NVEC which is NVIDIA graphics cards so this is anything from like the seventh series and up you basically hardware encoding and that's NVEC and with this NVEC there's NVEC new which means that if you have any RTX card or a 1660 so any of the newer cards you get a new encoder and this new encoder is really really good at streaming so as you guys can see here I have that selected over the old NVEC and over x264 so I have that selected right there and then for rate control, I have it at CBR because it's going to try to stay around this bitrate, which I set mine to 5,000. If you want it to go above and beyond, you can go to 6,000. And bitrate, basically, the way you figure it out is depending on your upload speed. So my upload speed is 15 and my download speed is 100. So then if my upload speed is uh, 15, then I know that using a 5,000 bitrate is only going to leave uh, 10,000 bitrate left around my house. So that is still perfectly fine fine if you guys have around uh, 10,000 bitrate overall so a 10 upload speed then you guys might want to do like 4,000 or 4,500 just to be safe so that way your internet in your house doesn't slow down when you're streaming and going down to keyframe intervals I like to keep that at zero preset I like to keep it at max quality because you know your boy loves getting the best for the best value I keep it on high and that's mainly due to the fact that a lot of the games that I'm playing are a little bit more demanding so just having that you know consistency of knowing that the graphics card is working just as hard trying to get the perfect performance out of it is just really really good for look ahead it's a new feature with the rtx cards and i have it turned off cycle visual tuning turned off max b frames i keep it at one just because for me that seems to work out really really well and then we go down to audio and this is all up to you guys this is just you connecting your microphone and lining it up then it's also just connecting your headphones and lining it up so i have everything connected so i'm moving on and then going over to the base canvas resolution this is pretty important i would say so for the base canvas always leave it whatever your monitor is so mine is 1920 by 1080 so i'm gonna leave it at that because it's perfectly fine my output is gonna be 720 and that is because as a streamer it's not really too important to have it over 1080 because if you're not a partner on twitch or on YouTube, you're not really gonna be supported with the bitrate, so you might as well just stick with what you're supported with. So 720 looks perfectly fine. You turn up the filter to 32 samples, and then you turn up the value to 60 FPS because you cannot have a 60 FPS stream. Then you're basically gonna be all good to go. And then you go down to hotkeys. And before I get too carried away, I forgot to go over the recording tab. So right here in output for recording, you just want to select the recording path. I always just make it out to my videos because that's the easiest folder to select it to really. And then audio tracks, I always keep one just because I don't really edit my audio separately but you can always select different audio tracks so that way you can have your microphone your gameplay your music everything like that but i just kind of keep it all together because i don't really use it and then same thing here constant bitrate is the best thing ever but the best thing about using nvec is that when you're recording you can actually turn up the bitrate a lot more and you're going to get more quality out of it so i usually keep mine at around 
25,000, which is a lot, but it also means that I can get a lot out of it. And the reason why I don't upload or stream at, you know, 25,000 bitrate is because Twitch doesn't support it and I don't have that type of internet, but I do have the GPU power. So when I record, it is something useful. And then same thing here, just turn that to max quality, turn this to high. And then for this one, I do have cycle visual tuning and I just see it as something that really does help. And max B frame, same thing all over. I just have it down to one B frame. So moving down to hotkeys, this is all going to be you guys once again, mainly due to the fact that, you know, you're going to have to set your own hotkeys. It's your own keyboard. Maybe you have an Elgato. So this is all really up to you guys. And then for advanced, I always keep my process priority above normal or high because for the games that I'm playing, a lot of the times having that processor GPU working a lot harder is a lot better. And then everything else here is kept the same game overlay. I do use this every now and then and i think it's a pretty nifty feature in case you're using one monitor even if you have two it's still pretty good in keeping you alert of what's going on with chat so a lot of the times i'll use this and just turn it on and then my overlays is at 60 percent opacity which means that i can still see it but it's not blocking my screen if that makes sense and then for scene selection this is all up to you guys once again notification same thing a lot of these things are up to you guys specifically which is a lot harder to explain than i would think because people think oh you know he's gonna go over it in the video but sometimes i can't because it's not something that is in my control simply due to the fact that i don't have the same layout as you which makes things a little bit more complicated, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, it can still work out. Appearances, I just have mine on night mode because I don't like the day, ooh, that's way too bright. So I don't really like that too much. Face mask, I've seen some streamers use it, some people don't use it at all, but it's there if you want to. It's basically, if something specifically happens, they can just add an overlay to your face. You have to have a decent camera though, if not like a decent webcam or DSLR as your webcam for it to work properly. And then remote control, this is just if you guys want to use your phone kind of like an Elgato Stream Deck, you can use your phone and download Streamlabs OBS the app, and then you can use your phone and it works pretty well actually, but I don't personally use it since, you know, I'm not doing too many interesting things while i stream or anything so that's always pretty good oh yeah and i stream in case you guys don't know down there i will leave the link down below to twitch.tv slash kryptonic hd same as youtube and i stream on there pretty often so if you guys do want to catch a video just head on over and you guys can ask me any type of questions because a lot of the time i'm just playing and answering questions and then obviously at the end of it, just make sure that you add in your game captures, you add in your alert boxes, you add in your webcam, everything like that to get your stream on the road as soon as possible. As you guys can see, I don't really have anything laid out here. I just kind of have the basic intermission screens. So it's nothing too great, nothing too bad. But like I said, having just those things down are very, very important. And if you guys do want to see another video of me kind of going on a deeper dive when it comes to Streamlabs, OBS Studio, Streamlabs Market, anything like that, let me know because I'm honestly, I know a lot about this, but I don't ever make videos because I don't know if you guys want it or not. But just let me know down below and I'm sure we can get this all figured out. Anyways, guys, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. And if you did, remember to leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this entire little setup. Microphone being here, me being here, light being right here, and then camera being here, and then monitor being here. Let me know. And also let me know if you guys would like to see a different uh, light. And also let me know if you guys would like to see a different color for the light. So far, the colors that I see that are working are dark blue, red, and purple. This is light blue. I don't know why I left it on here, but it looks kind of cool. But dark blue definitely looks way better. So let me know. Anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this entire video. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. If you guys have any questions whatsoever when it comes to OBS, let me know. But anyways, guys, hope you guys have a great day and I will catch you guys next time. Peace, guys. <laughs>